All right, we are moving on now to the back part of our cap piece here. Um, I went ahead and reinforced the front here with some uh, hot glue as well, and I put some little um, support braces across the front here, mainly to hold the entire form crimped in like it is right there, but also just for added strength, because I like to do that. And the back is comprised of these four pieces here, and there's going to be a kind of a strange cut that's going to be made on this piece here, which is that there. It has to be cut in the front, pulled in, in two areas. So it's pinched in the two areas, and then once on the back to make this little section right here. So we are going to do that now, and I've already marked off where it needs to be. So it's about right where there's a slight little divot right here, from that corner to that little divot. This will give our back part of our calf the look that we want it to have. And from this corner down to that corner. marked on this edge here with pen, the ballpoint pen. Okay. In addition, because the back here is angled the way it is, we're going to have to take a little off the edge as well. What's going to be the, um, I guess it would be this inside edge so that it matches flush up with that seam there. side too, even though I've already done the gluing on the uh, seams here, I probably would have wanted to trim this back before I did that, but we can make it work because I'm confident in my cutting ability. Oh yeah. There we go, it puts the lotion in the basket. Now the back little piece here is going to be getting flipped up slightly, so we're going to have to make a cut right here as well. And what I'll do is I'll draw a line in the center where I want it, and then I'll make that cut about a quarter of an inch wide. Just like that. There we go. 
Alright. Now we're going to make this look just like this one. Did I cut the wrong side? No, I cut the right side. And it looks weird, but it's all going to make sense here in just a second as to why we are pinching it in at such an extreme angle. Beautiful. Little things like this, guys, they make all the difference in your suit having a minimal amount of detail and a ton of detail. I like to squeeze every drop of detail out of it as I possibly can. There we go. So now with the back here, we're going to go ahead and we are going to attach the top first, work our way right on down to the front. See how it's going to come right there in the back? So we'll put a little bit of glue inside there and we'll close that gap up. Thanks again guys for checking out this video. Um, again, if you want to start your own suit of Halo armor, there are armor files inside the description below. There are two links inside there. One for Pretzel's Locker, where there are a lot of um, foam uh, modified ones from uh, Peppacore files. And then there's another link there which takes you straight to 405th and there it is a list of all the armor files needed for Master Chief's suit of armor from Halo 4. Right, on the other side. so that I could do the front and back at the same time. Like that. A little bit more. Mm. 
If you have any questions on a particular part that you'd like to see done in more detail, just let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to get a video up quickly addressing that particular piece that you're looking at. Hope these videos are helping you guys in your own armor endeavors. I love making armor. Love it. Future builds are going to be the Halo Mark VI, me, Mark VI suit of armor from Halo 3. Because, again, it is my favorite. And I will also be doing Chris Redfield's armored suit from uh, Resident Evil 5. So, that's something to look forward to in the future. I love the Resident Evil series. There we go. There's our back base piece here. And now, you see the way this is put together here? It's going to extrude a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, and then um, intrude back here. And this is going to be set about a sixteenth of an inch between those two pieces. So we've got our two here. I've already done my little um, detail piece on top. So I'm going to attach this to both sides of the um, the back part of the shin first. That way it's starting to pull the whole shape on in. I've given it just a slight curve, not too much, just a little bit of a curve there. Next piece, just keep it nice and straight. Just gonna fit. Uh, we'll go ahead and straighten the bottom of it out a little bit and attach it. And again, if anything needs more explaining, guys, if I'm moving too fast for anyone, please just let me know. And I will do my best to address that in future videos. Okay. So, the whole thing is going to start coming in here real quick. So, we'll find our side here. there. I'm a little more than an eighth of an inch above this piece here. Or excuse me, uh, this piece here. I 
And I like to set things higher and lower because I like adding just extra levels to it, just more dimension. You don't have to do it that way. I like to, so if you like it, give it a shot. Okay. A whole back piece here. It's going to snug right on up inside here. And you're going to notice that this one, there's kind of this groove that goes all through there. That's what we want. We want that groove to be there because we want it to have this kind of, uh, how what's the word? Almost like a like a hand and a glove kind of fit together. So we will attach the middle of this here first. We'll come up from the underside, and I'm going to set it down about an eighth of an inch from that top piece here. so you guys can see it. All right. Get pressure in from the sides here. Squeeze it all in there into place. We're almost done with this bad boy. Okay. So now for the bottom here. Pretty much this bottom corner right there and that bottom corner right there are going to come right where those two edges are here. And then we'll fold the rest of the piece in. And we'll glue all down this seam and all down that seam right there. You can see we'll glue all down this seam and that seam. This is where your uh, finessing is going to come into play here. to kind of force these shapes into place uh, to put some muscle into it. So we're pinning that little bottom corner on both sides first just to make sure we've got them where we want them. here as I do this, when I curve this around, that's going to tuck in here a little bit, and then we're going to push in right there, just like that. So pretty much corner to corner, corner to corner. best way to seal it in is line it up so that you've got that whole seam full, completely connected, and then just run glue down the whole thing. It'll save you some time. So we'll go from here, right on down. And we'll smooth her on out. Same thing on the other side.
Now guys, you do not have to build in this order as I'm doing. If you find it easier to attach everything just around, by all means do that. This is just the easiest way that I've found that it works for me. And you'll notice you have two little um, holes right up here in the corner there. Those fill in really easy from the back with some hot glue. You can see it taking its shape more. You see how it's doing that right now? That's what I love about doing a round piece. It all comes together in the end. Okay. So back is done. Now we're going to attach our front here. So front is going to be very, very similar to the back here. Um, go from the top down. Do your upper corners. Upper corners first. Excuse me. And then just work your way on down it. There's one side done. Smooth it on in there and hit the other side. Quick and easy. All right. So now this little um, upper area there is going to sit. It's not going to tuck under the piece here. It's going to sit along the edge. So you have to pop it up a little ways. Get that corner right in the other corner. So corner to corner again. Luckily with the calf and the shin parts here, it's all corner to corner for the majority of the piece. Which makes it really simple when it comes to putting this sucker together. It's more of a, I guess, a puzzle piece kind of set up, if you will, where everything just kind of fits together. You see right there, right along that. Smooth them out. As I said, you're going to have to manhandle it a little bit, getting all these shapes to merge together. There we go. Push these bad boys into place. All right. right. Down the edge there. Now for the front here. Pretty much you'll want the, um, the front part of the toe there to be, like these little points, to be level with that point there. So you will end up cutting a little triangle piece to fit inside there and bridge that gap. But you'll tuck this into the sides. So push it in a little ways. So you're making contact. And right about, right about there is where we're going to make contact with it. So I'm going to go ahead and trace that so I know right where the glue's going. There we are. As you can 
see. I'm making that contact nice and firm. You may have to hold it down here on the bottom part, excuse me, uh, part just a little bit longer for it to make full contact with there. Now for this little bottom part here. This will be real quick. Grab this little piece of scrap. Cut a couple small corner pieces. We're just going to merge them right together. I forgot the best way to do it. Where are you? like that. And that's just so it's aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't really serve a structural purpose, but it's just so you don't have a weird little like tooth sticking out the bottom there. And it rounds out the whole shape. Real quick and easy. Same on the other side. Same exact thing. And there we are. And there is our fully finished set of shins or calves, whatever you want to call them. And you can see how the shapes all came together with right that. The fact that they're circular, um, like cylindrical pieces like that, everything hinges off the first two pieces that you attach and then it all comes together in the end. So anyway, thank you guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to have tons more videos to come. Next time around, I should be working on forearms, so we're going to see how that all goes. Um, and for your knee piece that you built before, it's not going to be attached to um, your shin piece here. So what I am planning to do is a piece of elastic attaching from the back part here, loop through um, another piece of elastic at the base of my uh, thigh piece, which will be able to float right about like there on this. I don't know if you can see it too well in the video. Bring it back here. But it'll end up floating about there, about that much higher than the actual shin itself. So anyway, 
thanks a ton guys for checking out the video um, please drop a comment below if you want to see anything else done or if you have a question on anything at all um, smash those like and uh, subscribe buttons and we'll see you next time bye